So we have a quadratic expression, x squared minus 10x plus 14, and we are asked to find the smallest possible value of this expression. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to complete the square, not, not factor by completing the square, just completing the square. So we will stop a little earlier than we usually do. So let's see that. Half of the linear coefficient is negative 5, so our complete square is x minus 5 squared, which, when we expand, will give us x squared minus 10x plus 25. Therefore, we smuggle in 25. So we write x squared minus 10x plus 14 with a little gap left for the smuggling step, and into the gap we write plus 25 minus 25. That way we just added 0 to this expression, so we didn't change its value. The first three terms get absorbed into the complete square, and the last two terms are just combined. Negative 25 and plus 14 are combined. So we get negative 11. So now we have x minus 5 squared minus 11. Usually we proceed from here via the difference of squares theorem, but that's for the zeros. We have a different goal now to find the smallest value, and for that we need to stop right here. Um, this form is called the standard form. If we look at the linear expression, like 3x minus 1, we put into it a great negative number, we get a great negative number. We put into it a great positive number, we get a great positive number. It, the values are keep, just keep going in both ways. Now, x squared is very different in the sense that it has a distinct smallest value that linears don't have. If you look at the expression x squared, its smallest value is 0 because of the following reasons. 1. We can get 0 out of this. If x equals to 0, then x squared equals to 0. So 0 is possible. And second, no negative number is possible because if we square any number, if it's not 0, then, then the square is positive. No real number squares to a negative number. Therefore, Unlike linear expressions, quadratic expressions come with this new exciting feature that they have a smallest or a greatest value. Uh, this, this particular expression has only a smallest value, right, at, z at 0. This form, after completing the square, is, is the form that helps us understand these expressions. For example, what about the smallest value? So this expression, x squared minus 10x plus 14, has a smallest value. But what it is, for that, we need this standard form. Let's look at the complete squared part. If you step back and just think about x minus 5 squared as what it is, it's a square. It's a number, any number, then we subtract 5, and then what we get, squared. This expression alone, x minus 5 squared, has a smallest value, and it is 0. Right? Because it's a square, the same, same two ideas. Because it's a square, we cannot have a negative value out of it. And can we get 0? To get 0 as a squared, we have to start with squaring 0. But this expression, x minus 5, can be 0 when x is 5. So this expression alone has a smallest value, and it is 0 when x is 5. When, when x is 5, we have 5 minus 5, that's 0. 0 squared is 0. So we can get as low as 0, and clearly we cannot get below that because no real number squares to a negative number. So this expression has a smallest value just like this. The difference is, well, this is a little bit more complicated. This is the simplest one. This is 0 when x is 0. This is 0 when x is 5. Okay, now let's look at this expression. Imagine now that there are a, a number of people in a room and we play this strange game where everyone puts their money on the desk and see who has the least amount of money. And suppose I win this contest by being broke, having no money on me, so I have zero. And then imagine that someone comes into the room and sells everyone something that costs 11 bucks. Who is the poorest now in the room? And so the idea here is that if everyone pays the same amount, then the richest remains the richest, the poorest remains the poorest. How does it apply here? If the smallest value of x minus 5 squared was 0, then the smallest value of x minus 5 squared minus 11 is negative 11. 
So the smallest value of this expression is negative 11. When does that happen? When x is 5. That is a complete mystery from this part. Um, there is sort of a balancing act. Um, say x is a positive number, then this is a positive number. We're subtracting. What is bigger, x squared or 10x? It's a complete uh, mess. But if we bring it to this form, we have a square who has a very distinct lowest value, 0, plus or minus a number. For example, the expression 2e minus 1 squared plus 8 has a smallest value. How and what? It all begins with the idea of squares have a minimum value and that is zero. This here is a complete square, but it's a square nonetheless. So what is the smallest value it can possibly take? Zero. Then the smallest value of the entire expression is going to be zero plus eight, which is eight. And when does that smallest value occur? Now we have to see what has to happen so that this complete square part is zero. We basically have to solve the equation 2a minus 1 equals 0, 1 half. Okay, let's do one more. So a new example is x squared plus 8x minus 180. We complete the square. Half of the linear coefficient is 4, so our complete square to go for is x plus 4 squared, which when expanded results in x squared plus 8x plus 16, so we smuggle in 16. And then we recognize the complete square and combine the last two terms. Now what's a little tricky here is sort of that, that we had some protection until now. This here is a square. 14 squared is 196. So people might be tempted to go, oh, okay. So this is x plus 4 squared minus 14 squared and factor via the difference of squares theorem. But this is all true, but doesn't help because the factored form will tell you where a zero is, right? What this form tells us is something, it's an answer to a more vague question, which is basically, what is the lowest possible value this can take? Consider the many, many, many values. What is the smallest one? Here, we're just interested in when, when this expression takes a zero. And the answer is, well, x has to be negative 18 or 10, otherwise no go. This one is, is a little bit of a stranger question because we have to consider every possible value of this quadratic expression and find the lowest one. Well, so even though we might be tempted to factor via the difference of square theorem, that is not the thing to do. In fact, if someone gives us a factored quadratic expression, we would have to foil it out to and bring it to the standard form because for the lowest value, we should have a complete square and then we're gonna say, the lowest possible value of a square is zero. Therefore, so the first step is forget everything else, just look at the complete square part. The complete square part, x plus four squared, has the lowest value and that is zero. Can that happen? Because if the complete square part can take the value of zero, that must be the lowest possible value. So yes, this expression can take a zero when x is negative four. So the lowest possible value of x plus 4 squared is 0 when x is negative 4. Now consider that everyone in the room loses 196. Now the, the lowest one that used to be 0 is now negative 196, but everyone higher than 0 will be higher than negative 196. This one has a lowest value. The lowest possible value is negative 196 when x is negative 4. This is a tremendous step up in our mathematical development. It's almost like uh, a next step up. Not, not because the technique is difficult, not because of the idea is difficult, but the question is just so different. We used to have some sort of quantities, the area of a rectangle in terms of its size or the perimeter or an average value. We used to have those things, but usually what we were asked until now is, okay, when is this quantity zero? When is this quantity five? When is it negative two? So we always were given an expression and we wanted to find a specific value of it. This question is more difficult because it, it says, consider every possible value and find the lowest one. Now, there are infinitely many volumes, so this is, this is a more difficult question. And this is a fundamental question, one of the two obsessions of Calculus 1.
in the first calculus class, half the time we're going to work to develop new tools just because we're going to find lowest or highest values of expressions. In a sense, this is our first calculus question. We can think of it as mini calculus. The question is already calculus, it's just that quadratic is small degree enough for us to find this answer by completing the square. We do not have to develop specific techniques for finding lower, lowest value. If we go up to degree 3, 4, etc., then completing the square will no longer be an option, and that's what calculus is uh, addressing. In a sense, this is our first calculus question. We can think of it as mini calculus. The question is already calculus, it's just that quadratic is small degree enough for us to find this answer by completing the square. We do not have to develop specific techniques for finding lower, lowest value. If we go up to degree 3, 4, etc., then completing the square will no longer be an option, and that's what calculus is uh, addressing. So this, so this is a new question, a new type of a question, a new abstraction, if you will. When you're given an expression, and instead of finding a specific value of it, you have to consider all possible values and find either a highest or a greatest value or both. Thank you for watching.